Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, Episode 87. This episode of the podcast features an interview with Pietro Abella, co-founder of the ARC Institute. ARC is an acronym representing a return to consciousness, and Pietro's work combines bodywork and full emotional presence and awareness of the health practitioner, both to self and client. The result is a powerful healing modality which invites clients to process and release emotional trauma and pain. Did I lose you there? Well, just remember this. Pietro also makes a mean Turkish tea. Hey everybody, this is Reverend Jen Swanson. <laughs> Thought I'd try saying that. I'm still not quite used to it. And you are listening to the Communication Diva podcast, the podcast that helps to deepen relationships through better communication and personal growth. So you know that I finally graduated, and on Sunday, May 25th, before about 600 people, I was ordained as a uh, minister of the United Church of Canada. And with all the activity leading up to this, by the Sunday evening, I had almost no voice. And I was scheduled to do this interview with Pietro Abella that you're going to hear shortly. He lives not very far away from where the ordination was taking place over on beautiful Vancouver Island in a town called Qualicum Beach. And Pietro is a fascinating man who's doing some amazing work with communication and with self growth. And I really wanted to get this interview in because Scott had met Pietro in a workshop and right away sent me a text and said, you have to interview this man. So we took the time out of uh, the crazy weekend and met Pietro at his home and met his lovely wife, Melanie, as well. And uh, I'm going to bring you this interview um, in a moment. Pietro is the visionary and co-founder of the ARC Institute, and he is the creator of ARC Bodywork. He's a distinguished teacher, he's a mentor, he's a writer, and he's a workshop leader with more than two decades of experience. So it's with pleasure that I share my interview with Pietro with you now. Hi, everybody. This is Jen, and I apologize for my um, <clears throat> horrible voice at the moment, but I am here in beautiful Qualicum Beach on Vancouver Island, and I'm here with Pietro Abella. And so I'm going to turn you right over to him and say welcome. So can you um, tell me how you began the work that you were doing, a little bit about that? I would say I began the work that I, I'm doing back in uh, 1990. Uh, prior to that, I almost I would say I had an awakening and that awakening occurred, I would say, the, the, the culmination of my very first marriage. And um, I realized at the end of that that I was in gross denial. Um, I blamed my world for my problems. And something changed there. I, I set, remember going down a certain street. Uh, it was in Powell River in uh, BC here. And saying to a friend of mine, um, I, I need to take some responsibility for the actions that I'm taking, for you know what's been happening in my life so far, and that was crossing a threshold. And after that, things changed for me. I set upon my own personal growth journey. I set upon my own self improvement and committed to that. And the awakening aspect was I, I felt an excitement to be able to do something that involved helping others in some way. I guess helping oneself initiated or ignited that flame to, you know, to be available to help others. In the small town I was living in, because Powell River is a small, isolated town, there was really nothing there in oh. terms of schools or... Uh, but there was one, one guy who came who uh, was willing to teach a group of us nutrition. Oh. So I started off work learning about nutrition, studied that for two years. And in one of those... Um, uh, 
requirements for certification, we were asked to work on a hands-on way, in whatever hands-on way we wanted to work with, with 30 clients. And so I remember putting my hands down somebody's body and I could feel different variations in, it's almost like different clouds that are emanating from the body. I didn't have that experience of clouds, but it's the best representation I could have. Black, dark storm clouds, some were fluffy and all that. And I didn't know what that was, but um, I later learned that that was what we would refer to as energy or, or chi. I put my hands on the person and the person would sort of feel a very hot electric response from my hands and feel very calmed from, from it. So that was a absolute surprise for me. And, but it was something that got my curiosity going and, and, and sort of like gave me a path and I became very inquisitive about it and decided to study it. And so I, I then worked with some very good teachers in order to become familiar with what this was about, uh, this form of, um, I guess, hands-on healing. So you, you started off saying you were doing nutrition, though. So how did that... Uh, you were you were working with nutrition, and it was during that mm -hmm. that you discovered this energy. Yes, and nutrition was was in a way an, an interest, and still is to a lesser extent. But um, it sort of went in the background in favor of this, and this was the first stage of this this path, really, that led on to other developments. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I guess really my first, this first stage ended up in me becoming, I guess, certified, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. by certain schools and, and the recognition of my professional ability to provide hands-on energy healing. And that's really what I did back in 1990. Mm -hmm. um, I was a school teacher at the time. I gradually waned, waned down or, or decreased my school teaching activities and my practice really blossomed and boomed. I, I had a full practice within one year of coming into, um, you know, into, into private practice. And this was part of your own self-healing journey. So how was that going by that point? Well, uh, the self-healing journey I found goes together. Um, it's almost like, you know, if I become in relationship to my own anger, I could say, you know, or, you know, my, my allow for my own process and my own losses in life, I'm more qualified in a way to be able to work with other people's losses and other people's anger issues. So the more spacious, I guess I could uh, could say, I became within myself, um, the more um, adept I was to be able to be there for others. I, I quickly was realizing that, you know, as I what I work in within myself has a direct reflection was what I'm able to work with or support in working with others. So you d you discovered this this energy, and you, did you develop um, a method or a practice with that, or were you exploring other, like like Reiki or other types of disciplines? I guess what made it unique in a way, and you know the Chinese talked about a long time ago that there is a yin flow of energy and a yang flow of energy, and the yin flow of energy is from the earth, and the yang is from the sky. For whatever reason, I, I was finding that. Uh, North American energy workers or hands-on workers employed a yang source most of the time. And I was curious the fact that we live in a very earthy continent. Mm -hmm. In a sense, our First Nations forefathers and foremothers, we could say, were very, very earthy in their approach. So I was very conscious to be able to utilize a yin-based source and combine that with a yang-based source. And I found that in my energy work. Now, this probably contributed to the success of the practice, that uh, um, the, the, that sort of yin source was very much, um, it was able to help people with physical conditions um, and emotional conditions, um, whereas the, the yang source was more spiritual and emotional in, its, in, its, um, in, in what it favored. But I think one of the sort of things that really awakened me in that is the fact that my clients became dependent upon me. Uh, they'd go away and get their backs sorted out, back problems sorted out, and then they'd have to come back. And I questioned whether I was supporting a form of codependence mm. in a way. And not only that, I would find that when I put my hands on somebody, let's say a sore back, 
in, invariably they would talk to me about their stresses and their problems in life. I didn't ask them to. I didn't feel qualified to do, to do that, but that was happening. And I was finding that those who talked about their stresses, it would, it would be longer before they'd need to come back than those who didn't. And I became very curious about that and decided that I needed to add something more to my work. A, to, dis to sort of see if I can um, have them not dependent upon me because I'm not sure that was true healing in a way. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to explore the emotional connect connection to physical concerns. So how did you go about developing the practice that you have? Can you name the practice and tell us a little bit about what it consists of? The practice is called, my work is called A Return to Consciousness. Um, that represents the acronym ARC. So um, ARC body work would encompass the type of work that I'm, I'm calling here. ARC has since spread, you know, because it is also has become a communication technique and method, uh, which has been an outcrop of, of, of this work. Um, it's also a, uh, a method to be able to um, uh, map personal growth as well. There's something I kind of discovered from this, you know, which I didn't know about myself, uh, which was I'm good at systems, you know, that is to say, um, putting to understanding a, a format and, and, and sort of sectionalizing it to be able to it, it to be able to be understood and, and taught. So uh, that, that, that the communication aspect came out of the curiosity of the connection between the emotional issues um, and in physical outcomes. And so how do you put a system together? How did you uh, how did you organize this in a way so that you can use it as a practice? And then I understand you also teach it to other people. I think um, a large part of it, one of the advantages in having a full practice, you know, which I've I've had for 23 years now, is that you have a lot of people coming through your hands, you know, in, in that sense. So there's a lot of observation possibilities. Um, I think a lot of it is to do with the being able to listen. Um, to sit back and obs obs when I say listen, I'm, I'm talking about not listening necessarily with ears, but listening with eyes, listening with body as well, and to be able to sit back and observe. And I think a large part of that as well is being humble mm -hmm. as well, knowing when your eyes are being influenced by my personal needs and recognizing that and standing back from it. And to be honest with you, a lot of it is trial and error as well. Um, many times I'd be trying something out and it clearly wasn't working and so if the client was to open their eyes they'll see me sort of like pat my head saying no no Pietro not not that <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the wrong road to go down there so tripping up a lot of the time and and I, and I think you know um see what works the client will tell you or you'll be able to observe from yourself about if, if the client's lifestyle changes then something that you're doing is working mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So how long does a client typically spend with you? Um, is it a series of sessions or is it a, you know, a few months? It depends on the health goal. Mm -hmm. I think invariably a client will come through my door with, a, with something they want sorted out. Something is not working for them in their life, whether it's a physical concern, emotional concern, relationship concern, well, spiritual concern. And... Once they've reached the goal, then essentially um, a client could say, that's enough, I'm happy. Um, but I find that a lot of people realize that personal growth is an ongoing process. And so they keep on with me. They want, they want they've, if they've had an experience of self-improvement and they want to continue self-improving, they have a betterment in their world you know they have something that's positive within their own family relationships their own working relationships they feel good about themselves and they have the sense more can be achieved so I have people that have been working with me for months you know sometimes one or two sessions I have a lot of people that continue to work with me over 20 years mm. you know and there's no sign that they want to necessarily leave and the advantage to that is that I've had, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, watching a child grow up from the age zero to 
75 or 80, you know, you, you, you can live through almost through, you feel like you're living through a whole life with, with a person. And that's a great um, learning f for me as a companion on their journey. And so is the, the hands-on component of it. That's not, uh, it, that's not exclusively what you do now because you um, do have international clients as well. And so mm -hmm. what do you do with those people? <clears throat> Well, yes, it's true. I have international clients um, and, you know, those international clients will phone me and I'll do sessions on the phone and I'll do sessions on Skype. And so you can't really do the hands on stuff in those um, particular modalities. So um, I guess going back to, you know, the development of this work, um, I, I began to realize that the body has its own intelligence in a way that's quite distinct from mind intelligence. There's a different way one can communicate with the body. Um, I also notice as well that when people tell their stories, how they present their stories can be different to how the body language presents the stories. So I've, I've sort of formulated a, a communication method called body speak, um, whereby questions are asked based upon the um, the body language that's being presented and so um, that's how that it, it, there's eight steps to body speak um, and essentially um, half of those steps will be about following the process that a person is on and another half of those uh, steps are about challenging the process that people are on uh, one cannot ex exist without the other essentially. And body language is often much more true than the words that come out of our mouths, isn't it? I would say body language doesn't lie, yeah. essentially. But you can't, you, you can't, you've got to be able to listen to the story as well as to listen and observe the body language, essentially. One cannot go without the other. So to be able to to be able to be effective in this sphere, one has to have, let's say, heightened listening skills. That's an essential component to this. And that's part of what you're teaching? And you're teaching that to clients? Or are you teaching it to the people that are becoming facilitators like you are? Well, um, you know, when I, when I, back in 1994, I thought I was done with school teaching. And then it's almost like when I, Almost when I finished school teaching, my clients came in en masse, really, and asked me to teach my work. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about doing it up to that point. And so then I put together a course to, to teach it. Um, initially, it was to teach people to become um, facilitators, as, as I was, as I am. But it, there wasn't an, an essential component, you know, in that is, and that is the ability to be present to one's clients it depends upon one's ability to be present to oneself. So more and more was emerging that self-growth is an important component to that. So now I, I have two distinct courses, which actually are quite connected in many ways. I have a course which is about practitioner for facilitator development, where this method, these methods and techniques can be used to help others, which brings emphasis on one's ability to help oneself. And I have a, a program that's designed about totally about personal growth, where one does not work on anybody else. One works exclusively on oneself. And how long would these take? Well, the uh, facilitator practitioner course, which is called a journey to consciousness or the journey to consciousness, um, is typically five courses over 12 months to 18 months. And the a path to authenticity, which is a personal growth program, is again five courses and a same period of time, 12 to 18 months. So the person really has the time then to put these into practice, the, the skills and the techniques and, the, and, and to grow during this time. The, the space in between is essential. And um, in the practitioner's course, there are assignments. And in those assignments, the practitioner or the facilitator is asked to work with people to take the skills learned in the courses and apply them to their own clients mm -hmm. and um, and to do assignments and therefore I give feedback on those assignments as well. Mm -hmm. Are these face-to-face -face courses? Are you teaching clients one-to-one -one or in a group? or uh, they, they are 
in groups, these courses. Um, the assignments are, are, are one-to-one. And um, so, so essentially, it's, it's, it's in a class format. Mm. Sounds wonderful. Sounds like you've got a lot uh, happening. And another thing that you've got happening is you've got a book that's, uh, that's written and uh, not quite out yet. Yes, uh, the book was an inevitability uh, from this. Um, it's sort of like, you know, you, you, in a way you're asking people to come to myself or I'm coming to others. It, it limits the, the possibility of getting to know this work. The book expands that. I think it's a, an expensive way to you know, have self-growth. Um, the book starts from the beginnings of self-growth and I think offers an effective methodology in order to achieve um, a life of authenticity, ultimately. And you said there were five steps. Mm. Uh, would you be able to name those and tell us a little bit about that? Well, personal growth, as I say, is something that I have mapped, and this doesn't mean to say that necessarily everybody's personal growth journey is the same, but it follows through five territories uh, that are predictable. And there's certain times in each of these, in personal growth, you sort of like wonder, you know, what's going on? It was the same for me. When when I was, and, and you know, in those days, in the early days working on myself, there was nobody there to tell me really why I was experiencing this. Like why at certain times was I feeling sad why at certain times was I feeling rebellious <laughs> you know why at certain times was I feeling um more in touch with myself and that and when you understand the territories the five territories of personal growth then it makes sense of those of those um times so the five territories that are essentially uh, in my vernacular uh, the defense and that's really a time of resistance the thing that you can be guaranteed if you want to change, you're going to you're going to hit resistance. The question is, how can you recognize the resistance and how can you work with it? There's another territory which um, I've I've come to call the exile territory, and that's um, also been based on a, a book written by Richard Schwartz. And uh, he, he calls the uh, what can be called the inner child, actually, um, an, an exile because that exile part of ourselves is usually buried beneath the, um, the resistance. So that, that's the second territory. The third territory is the process of integration. Um, prior to that, our, our system is we've been working from separation or maybe inner conflict in a sense, you know. But integration is the, the, the beginnings of agreement, the agreement of what, where we're heading, what we want to achieve, elements about ourself the fourth one is forgiveness simple as that forgiveness of others begins with the forgiveness of ourselves and the fifth is the, re the return to consciousness so those are the five five territories and how have you been growing in doing all of this work when you have a client in front of you <clears throat> it's magical in the sense that you can be working on an issue. Let's just say that you've had a disagreement with your wife about money and that money is based upon the scarcity that you feel uh, that goes way back, you know, when you were younger, for example. And you, you're fresh out of that disagreement and your wife is maybe saying, you've got to get over your scarcity of our money. <clears throat> And then your client comes in and they're starting to talk about scarcity around money. And not only that, but the next one and the next one comes, right? That's something magical, you know, about that. <laughs> Inevitably, I find that your clients um, reflect often what's going on for you. And you being sort of like forced to being available for them asks that you work on yourself in order to work through what's going on for yourself. That's stimulated by what's going on for them so that you can be available. It, you're on the front line of your personal growth when you work with clients in this way. And it, it forces you in a way to, to be working on yourself. If you don't, you get left behind, <laughs> you know? Right. And who wants to be left behind? <laughs> you, you seem very passionate about this topic. I can see it in your body language when you're uh, talking about it, and that's great. Are you energized by this work? I am fully energized by this work. I'm passionate about it. I love it. I believe in it. And I 
think about it all the time, you know. I'm, I'm wanting to try it out in different arenas, and I have, and I do. I'm wanting to test it out, and um, it's, it's truly in my heart. So where do you see yourself in five years, Pietro? Um, I would see myself in five years, hopefully, as an author. With um, I, It's almost like I have one ambition, in a way, in, and that is to see my book on a bookshelf in some bookstore. I would be so happy with that. And, and uh, I, I feel, and I, I've had really tremendous reviews on my book and I have a good agent and all of everybody concurs in the belief that that's very possible, you know, that that will be, will be happening. <laughs> so in five years, I would like to see that in far less than five years. Um, I'd like to see myself, um, I'm a traveler. I've traveled in 37 countries to date. I like to go off the beaten track. I'd love to get invites to be able to do speaking in in many different countries, you know, to have the the opportunity to provide what I feel I have to offer my world, my community uh, t to other communities, to other people, other nations. Mm. And you do workshops right now. You go around and do talks, don't you? And uh, what would some of the topics of those talks that you have available be? Um, I give presentations um, and, as you say, workshops. When workshops last for weekends, uh, sometimes five days, depending on the workshop. I'll give a talk on um, some of my presentations typically are talks on how um, emotions and stress affect, maybe even create uh, pain, discomfort, disease. I'm not afraid to step into controversy. Um, talks such as how to find your power. Um, I really enjoy giving talks, uh, presentations about communication skills. Uh, body speaks as a communication skill is being used in teaching, university teaching. And I really think it's, it would work well with hairdressers, for example. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime people have uh, communication opportunities with people, with the public, is an opportunity to use body speak. I think it would be very good. It is proven to be very good in um, relationship interaction for the deepening of intimacy. So those communication skills, body speak skills can be applied in many different formats to many different areas of expertise. I was thinking of hairdressers earlier when you were talking about uh, not asking people for their emotional issues and <laughs> getting them anyway. I'm sure that would be relevant and, and the work that you do would be helpful to a lot of people. I think so too. Yes, there was a time that I was sitting getting my hair cut and I'm very honest and authentic and somebody says, if somebody asks how I am doing, you'll probably get the real deal. <laughs> and I remember a hairdresser giving me an advice that I should take a therapist. <laughs> and then she said at the very end, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so you great. never know. <laughs> That's great. So what would one thing you want to, what would be one thing that you'd like to leave the listener with today? One piece of wisdom, piece of advice, something you'd want to uh, share with them? I think the last, given that choice here, uh, if you were to ask me, you know, Jennifer, what is, the, describe your word, uh, work in one, uh, describe your work in one word, or, or even like, what what is the outcome of your work in one word? I would say authenticity. Um, it's a word I very much believe in. And, and that is that um, I would encourage everybody to uh, sign up for the personal growth journey and that is just to make that journey a conscious process so we're all on it um, in order to reach a level of authenticity um, and essentially w that is being able to manage our our anxieties for example to be able to, to um, be an observant when our past unresolved issues are making themselves known in present issues and therefore affecting our choices, affecting our lifestyle, our ambitions. So authenticity is about the ability to manage that in a way of being that is truly being ourselves. I don't know that there's much that is more rewarding than that. Mm. Uh, I'm a beneficiary of that. And I am. I, th I think one of the biggest gains of life that I have is being able to see people on a daily basis reach authenticity it is so satisfying satisfying to see my clients 
reach uh, levels of authenticity where life changes for them is satisfying seeing my students in the same way. I would love people to commit to the to the journey to authenticity on their path of authenticity. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And if people want to know where to find you, Pietro, where can they where can they seek you out? I can be seen on my website, uh, or my work can be represented on my website. That's the Arc Institute. Dot com. Um, I am have released uh, excerpts fr- from my book, um, chapter by chapter. Every Friday there is a new blog post, and that's on Pietro.ca. Um, I can be reached by phone. Uh, my phone number is two five zero seven five two three eight five zero, or toll free eight zero zero. Seven three four four three seven two. <laughs> Great, and people can pre-order your book, can't they? They can pre-order my book. Uh, if you go onto my blog and just press the little tab there that says pre-order the book, that's where you would go and just put a little bit of information. Uh, there's no obligation to it, but certainly um, those who are signed up will have the first choice for first editions when it comes out, hopefully soon. Fantastic. So I will put all of that information on the show notes at communicationdiva.com. And I want to thank you very much for taking time out of what sounds like a very busy schedule to have this visit and this conversation. And I wish you all the best in, uh, in all your endeavors. Thank you. Very busy schedule, but very rewarding schedule at the same time. And thank you for, the, for this, Jennifer. So I hope that was of interest to you. I am uh, thoroughly interested in the Body Speak program, and when uh, Pietro is offering it somewhere in my neighborhood, I'm hoping to partake of that because it sounds fascinating. The Turkish tea that was uh, spoken of at the beginning was uh, uh, something that he served to us uh, when we were there for the interview, and apparently it takes five days to brew it. It was really delicious. So uh, that's what that was about. If you are interested in getting a very cute infographic poster, absolutely free, it's a PDF download on summertime office dress code, please join the email list. I'd ask you to join it anyway. Come over to the site and you'll see this big kind of obnoxious red and yellow button on the right-hand side of the screen that says subscribe now. It's completely free and this gives you access to the emails that I send out, the newsletters very infrequently I must say but I do send them out sometimes they include bonus offers and and special information and uh, for signing up you can download this pdf for free and I think it's very cute it's a cartoonish kind of thing and uh, you can take it to work and hang it up if um, if you're you know interested in that if you're a boss or or whatever but um, check that out and uh, it's there for you if you are interested in that The other thing that I've got on the website, I've got a couple of tabs. One of them is a products tab, and this is where you can get the Public Speaking Success, the Communication Diva's Guide to Presenting with Confidence. This is a five-part audio download series that helps you to get better at public speaking. And it doesn't matter if you're talking at a wedding or a funeral or you're talking on a stage in front of numerous people. This will help you get set up, help you figure out where to put your body, where to um, you know, direct your conversation, things to do with the screen, what to do if something goes wrong, how to prevent things that might go wrong, etc. It's a jam-packed five-part series on public speaking, and I hope that you will check that out. The uh, other thing that I've got there is a, a resource tab, and that is where you can find all sorts of things to help you tell your story if you are at all interested in podcasting. I uh, have been using Libsyn as the podcasting platform. They have fantastic customer service, and there is a promotion if you are interested at all in podcasting. Uh, You put in the word diva and you will get up to two months free hosting for your podcast if you are interested. If you're wanting to listen to us on Stitcher Radio, I also have a absolutely free app there that you can download for your device that will allow you to customize your podcast listening adventures. And if you enter the promo code Jen Swanson, all one word, you can win a $100 gift card. So there's that. 
Also, if you'd like to share Communication Diva, I'd love you to go over to iTunes, search Communication Diva Podcast, and enter a rating or a review. I've been very lax on asking people to do that, and I would really appreciate you taking the time to do that and entering a review. The more reviews, the more people will find Communication Diva. I've got lots of interviews and new topics to share in the coming weeks. If you have any topics or questions you'd like me to consider, you can come over to the website at communicationdiva.com and leave me a voicemail or an email. I'd love to help you be a more effective communicator. So um, please stay in touch, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. This is Jen Swanson. Thanks for listening.